Is this heaven? No, it's a podcast. Welcome to the Field of Geeks podcast. to episode 180 of the Fickle Geeks podcast. I'm Josh. I'm Bill. I'm Steve. I'm Megan. Great. That was awesome. Yeah, we didn't even discuss the order, so it all worked out. <laughs> well, yeah, we haven't been back for a bit. So we had Christmas and then we had um, New Year's. Kind of start to show off in a sad note a little bit. Uh, you know, we lost someone huge right before the New Year's, right before they were going to turn 100. Uh, Betty White, she passed. And um, yeah, Bill, you, I believe, did some research on um, her and others that uh, recently left us. Yeah, like Josh said, um, died just, sh- just shy of her 100th birthday. Um, we were actually a uh, celebration of sorts planned for uh, January 17th. It's called Betty White, a celebration. and set for a theatrical release. As far as I know, they're still planning to release that. Um, a lot of big stars kind of give their um, give their piece and their story about Betty White, um, the pioneer of, of early television, got her start in radio, uh, worked in front of and behind the camera for many, many years. Um, probably best known for her spot on the Golden Girls is Rose Nyland. Yeah. Uh, won a Guinness World Record in 2014 for the longest TV career for a female. Wow. Um, and then, of course, uh, 2010 Super Bowls commercial, the Snickers commercial, <laughs> yeah. uh, kind of reignited her popularity. She kind of became a meme at that point. And uh, there was even a petition that was going around to get her to host Saturday Night Live, which I believe she eventually did. In she did. Yep. 2014, something like that. I think so. Which is silly. Why, why petition? I mean, what the hell, people? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I mean, it was... Uh, she was just a comedic genius, wonderful person, mm-hmm. um, very uh, big, outspoken advocate about animal welfare, racial injustice, uh, LGBTQ rights. Um, apparently, I, I found this out uh, a few days ago. Her last words were Alan, which mm-hmm. is her late husband that died in 1981. So oh. that was kind of that kind of put it into perspective for me. Um, yeah. I mean, she did several interviews on, you know, why didn't she ever get remarried or anything like that? And she's like, well, I had the perfect man. Why would I, you know, <laughs> yeah. why would I want to settle for anything less than that? So absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, just very yeah. long and storied career. And she was just a pioneer for a lot of things. Uh, she was on game shows. She was on TV, uh, movies, you name it. She did it. Yeah, her husband, Alan, was one of the hosts of those game shows. Maybe a couple of them, but she made the rounds, like you said, and she's very good at those game shows, and I think that's how she met him. Yeah, I want to say he was like a he was like a guest on one of her game shows that she was doing, and that's how they initially met. That's cool. Um, I think she, at first, with the... I don't I don't know much about Betty White lore other, other mm-hmm. than Golden Girls, so sure. that's kind of where I got introduced to her, but... Apparently she was uh, on these game shows. She was kind of like a, I don't know if you want to say like the eye candy, but you know, like the kind of like the Barker's Beauties kind of thing. Like, oh, they always had like a, a woman in the background, like flipping the cards and yeah, doing all that kind of shit. And, right. Um, I think that's kind of how she got her start. I mean, she was big into radio at first. I mean, uh, you you think about it, she was born in. 1922 so that's i mean that's that was years before you know even color television was out so yeah she's had a hell of a career and she served in the military uh, she's done it all yeah um yeah i mean it's just wonderful for her to in her later years to experience all this you know uh nostalgia for like all the stuff she ever did uh you know golden girls has a freaking lego set you know uh, oh yeah it's crazy how people love it. I mean, the new generations love it as well. And it was really a show ahead of its time. And it is, it is crazy because yeah, I think they were in their fifties on this show, maybe, maybe pushing 60, but now, I mean, yeah. it's just, um, it doesn't feel like, uh, 
the same, no. you know. People would look Estelle, much younger. I want to say Estelle Getty was in her 70s. Yeah, well, she was... When yeah, she started that show, and she was like the the mom character, but right, she was playing an I mean, older character. Old. Yep, um, she was the I want to say the last surviving Golden Girl of the Betty foreign. White. Yeah. Yes. Yes, she was. She was the last. Yeah. I'm pretty. Sure, I know Rue Rue McClanahan's dead. Uh, mm -hmm. Arthur, she died. Yeah, and uh, she was on Mary Tyler Moore as well, and I think she's she might be the last of that as well. There's a great documentary on her career on netflix you should check out um really got to learn a lot more about her whole career because all i really knew was the golden girls and then after that i remember she showed up in lake placid you know that was a big deal because i think she cursed in that and people were like ah, that's cool <laughs> you know yeah. especially teenagers like i was then but yeah yeah it, it's hard to pin down one specific great thing that she did a legend that you you know one of those people that you never that you never thought you'd see a world without right yeah she's so close to being 100 i think january 17th yeah well and and she did live live through a few leap years so i think we can give her a pass yeah that's fine she gets she's it close <laughs> she gets it she was you know clearly earned all the accolades she's received i mean she's she's always a legend she was always a class act um and, you know, she transcended every genre she was ever in. I mean, she, she's gone through it all, radio, TV, film. She was awesome, and she's one of those few people that could, you know, really excite multiple generations, you know? I mean, yeah, that's, that's something that's kind of rare. It doesn't really happen too often. You know, if I talk to somebody about Jack Benny or Rochester or, you know, <laughs> Fred Allen... They don't know who the hell I'm talking about half the time, <laughs> but everyone knows who Betty White is. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Hopefully they rediscover or they discover all those other people because she was associated with a lot of them. So it's kind of like once you do the, once you dive into her career, you kind of get into other people and yeah, it, it's a shame a lot of people don't know that, that history there and they, they probably think a lot of new comedy is new and it's really, a lot of it's borrowed from the past and just tweaked a little bit, you know? A lot of good stuff out there. Yeah. You can make the argument that nothing's original anymore. Really? Yeah. You know, everything's <laughs> kind of come, come from something. And true. I really, uh, I really hope that people do go, uh, take this theatrical release seriously and just, you know, go and see it. Just if nothing else to see what a long and storied career she's had. Oh, sure. I'm sure it'll be very successful. Um, yeah, that, I didn't even know that was happening, so that's that's really cool. I, I'm gonna go Actually, check that out. Uh, what was it when I went to go see <laughs> Spider Man? There was a preview for it in the theaters, and uh, oh really? Man, there's everybody you can think of, like Ryan Reynolds. Um, that's just cool. To name one off the top of my head, but there's all kinds of people that are involved in this and just telling their stories about Betty White. That's cool. I think especially now that she's, I mean. They made a big deal about her 90th birthday. There was a huge celebration, yeah. on, I think, on TV about yep. it. Um, and uh, there, this was going to be, you know, 10 times bigger than that. And it's just unfortunate that she wasn't around to see it. But Yeah, of course. Yeah, I know. It, it was a really shock. I thought I was hoping it was fake fake news, but then they all chimed I was, in. So I was just like, what? No yeah. way. She's joking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you hear about... You hear about celebrities and stuff dying all the time, but I think Betty White's one of the one of the few that just devastated me when I heard the news. One of those things you just never thought she was ever going to die. No, never did. Yeah. Just like Sidney Poitier. Um, he was ninety four. Wow. He is survived by six daughters, eight grandkids, and three great grandkids. Biggest accomplishment, of course, he was the first black person to win an Academy Award for Best Actor. The second wow. person to win that award was Denzel Washington for Training Day. So that's cool. There's there's a big gap in between. It, unfortunately, two, but, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, but uh, Lilies of the Field was his first uh, big movie that he got uh, got that award for. Um, he was granted a knighthood by Queen Elizabeth in 1974. Um, of course, some of his biggest accomplishments in the Heat of the Night. Guess mm -hmm. who's coming to dinner? Um, to Sir with Love. Um, he served on the board of directors for Walt Disney Company from 1995 to 2003. Wow. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's just, uh, you know, 
to see the the list of people he inspired. I mean, without him, we wouldn't we very likely wouldn't have Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman, Chadwick Boseman. The list goes on. Oh, I mean, there's sure. This he was uh, talk about pioneers of the industry. He he very much paved the way for a lot of actors of color. Oh, absolutely. I, I remember um, well, my first experience with in the Heathen Night. My first introduction, if you will, was the Carol. Uh, Carol O'Connor. Connor, yes. Uh, it was the TV version, and I remember that was like to me the heat of the night. And then one day, this preview came on, you know, like a cable channel. They were showing an old movie, and it was the original in the heat of the night. And I'm like, who the hell are these people? <laughs> like, what is this? I didn't know it was a as a yeah. movie. And that's a great movie, great movie. Um, guess who's coming to dinner? I saw that so long ago, but very good. Uh, Sneakers, that's a great movie, too, he was in. Oh, absolutely. It's underrated. I mean, I don't know if, uh, Steve, Megan, have you ever seen Sneakers, heard of it? It's not the shoe. It's, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. I, um, you know, this guy was just, he was phenomenal. And I know, I remember being, I guess, officially introduced to him back in the late 80s. Um, I mean, I knew who he was, but there was an 11-year gap between his, last film and and then one called shoot to kill and it had him tom berenger oh, uh, yeah. Alley, clancy brown um phenomenal oh, just a fun great movie that's a and, good uh, one yeah yeah and that kind of um paved the way for his you know kind of re-entry and um you know he took a big break and then after that he was pretty busy so yeah he was just awesome that's cool, and that was a that was a special night when Denzel got his Oscar because that was the same year I think Halle Berry won, and Sidney Poitier was actually getting a lifetime Oscar, whatever they call that. But I, it was the new, yeah. it was the new Kodak, uh, Kodak Theater, and I remember he was like sitting to the side, uh, you know, um, in a booth, you know, or wherever they, they call it on the side there. Um, but yeah, they all got honored that night. It was really, really a special special moment if anyone wants to see like just the impact he's had um watch if you can find it on youtube watch uh denzel's acceptance speech oh yeah that was good for yep. that award um because he he greatly honored sydney and you know sydney was a, a very humble guy too he he didn't set out to be a you know activist or anything by any means but a lot of his movies touched on things that really open people's eyes oh yeah so i guess it was, coming uh, to dinner was wow groundbreaking at the yeah. time and that was even my uh my introduction to that movie was actually from uh a line in star trek six when uh, oh yeah check off when uh check off <laughs> makes that comment guess who's coming to dinner um my dad was like oh that's from a movie i'm like oh really he's like yeah and then we watched it came on tv like I don't know, two weeks or so after I saw Star Trek six and I was like, Oh wow. Was... <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I had a little pop culture yeah. nod. There. I mean, it was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, just to, just to go back and see, you know, it's certainly things that we take for granted today Yeah, uh, that we don't think are huge issues today, but you know, it's, uh, back in the day it was, it was huge. And, yeah. uh, he definitely opened people's eyes to a lot of that. And then, of course, the the video game sports pioneer, you could say, John Madden. He died at 84, um, just shy, a couple days before uh, Betty White, actually, on the 28th. Wow. Um, so he was uh, very much a, uh, I guess a lot of people would consider him like the personification of football. Yeah. Um, at least for the NFL, especially. Um, one thing I, I didn't realize, I guess, is that he... Um, he actually was scheduled to play for the Philadelphia Eagles. And during training, he got injured and was kind of sidelined with that and never got the opportunity to actually play professionally. Um, he did, oh, wow. however, go on to coach the Oakland Raiders from 69 to 78 and they never had a losing season. They even ended up going to the Super Bowl. Um, but yeah, and then you know, basically a color commentator from 1979 through 2009. He was the voice of football. Yeah, you couldn't turn on, you couldn't turn on a game, especially on you know Thanksgiving Day or whatever. Whenever my uncles would always be huddled around the tel television, you'd always hear John Madden's voice. Yeah, it's true. Um, All right. But uh, from the from a gaming perspective, though, um, the Madden games have 
always been hugely popular and he started those in 1988 come a um, long way yeah he started uh, kind of you know licensing his name and everything to be used for those um he didn't see them as just mindless video games he saw them as a tool to get people interested in the game and the rules of it wow yeah did that so, help from your perspective i i never really played madden too much but i i wonder I, if that actually was useful i never really played madden but i know um you know, there, there's probably a lot of people like sports analysts and stuff like that that are just really big into the, um, you know, all the technical aspects of football that mm-hmm. probably can credit Madden for helping them with that. Especially with um, the new yeah. cameras they have. You, you could probably say that was uh, inspired by the, the games, how they could just go around the players and oh yeah, all those crazy shots. Uh, yeah, I mean, American football wouldn't be what it is today without John Madden. No very confidently say that so i played a lot of madden throughout the years and um you know for i don't know five six year stretch you know i was getting the new version every single year and um it was just a lot of fun i mean the ncaa game um at one point you could play that game create your own team and you know athlete or whatever and uh, that person after four seasons would graduate from college and you can import them into Madden. Um, <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, yeah, it was really, it was Holy awesome. Shit. Yeah. They did a lot um, of innovative things with those games. It was just crazy. Yeah, it was great, you know, and hearing Madden's um, commentary was always hilarious sometimes, you know, uh, the team that scores the most points is going to win the game. <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and and you know, but he he was the guy. The guy was a football legend. Oh yeah, he was awesome. tough acting, to acting. Frank uh, Caliendo. The only thing I remember about the game was <laughs> yeah. his commentary. Yeah, uh, um, you remember his skits? Uh, Frank is it Frank Caliendo did him a lot. Is impersonated him a lot on Mad TV. He would do like uh, oh yeah, <laughs> the pop the easy popcorn popper or something, and he kept all the screw ups and stuff and he just get mad and more and more mad. <laughs> I think he did that impression in front of Madden ones. I don't think Madden cared for it too much. Yeah. yeah. But I, uh, I remember knowing uh, he didn't, he never flew. I think he always was um, traveling uh, with a bus to the, the States. Yeah. That was something. He uh, had like a huge aversion to flying for some reason. He just didn't, uh, didn't trust it or uh, I don't know. Me and him both. Yeah. I was gonna say I completely understand that fear. Even yeah, after my own heart. Oh, I've never flown. I I'd rather do a bus. Sure. <laughs> have to knock me out, man. Well, I've I flown hundreds of times and I hate it every time. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. that doesn't make me look forward to it. <laughs> after you know what? After years of doing convoys with the military, uh, I'll I'll take a I'll take a plane anytime. Yeah, just used driving, to it. Driving for sixteen hours at you know, <laughs> five miles an hour sucked. Oh. Um, I always kind of saw him as like a little bit of a joke just because of all of the, you know, catchphrases and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you put all that aside, like you can laugh at him all you want, but right. you have to really recognize that. Oh yeah. The, Hell of a legacy. The amount of contributions and legacy he left behind. So, well, the screen was his too, right? He didn't he kind of invent that. Uh, well, I'm sure people did that, but the way they were able to put it on the, the teleprompter for everyone to see out there and, you know, draw yeah. on the screen or whatever. That was revolutionary. Yeah. I mean, he did that, or he introduced that. I, to my knowledge, not a big yeah. sports guy, but yeah, I, mean, I uh, that was a Sunday tradition at my house growing up. I was watching football. And, yeah, you know, he was. Didn't matter what channel you turned it to, it always seemed like John Madden and Pat Summerall were, <laughs> yeah. you know, the the commentary for it. But, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, they'll all be missed. And, of course, everyone else who, you know, passed we didn't touch on. But um can only we'll get to... better from here. Right, right. And it will because – oh, go ahead. Patrick Stewart or, you know, uh, Morgan Freeman pass away. Uh, Please don't. Don't. No, not don't this year. See your doctors, you know, get, get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll just send doctors to everyone's houses we're concerned about. There is a cool article, though, we did – I did share on our page last night, I think – a lot of actors still in their, like 14 actors or so in their 90s are still, you know, they're still involved in projects and stuff. Uh, you know, we got Mel Brooks, obviously, and um, 
uh, some others. I can't remember the name right now, but Mel Brooks. I mean, God, that's crazy. He's uh, last I knew he's going to be able to do the history of the world part two. I think he's doing that for Hulu maybe or something, but pretty yeah. cool. It's like a 30, 40 year gap, I think, between the his film he did before, but that's cool. And he just got, he just released a book. So I, it can give us all hope, right? We're going to live, we're going to live forever. I don't know if I will. I've, I've eaten so much pizza in my lifetime. It's probably not, not going to be good for me, but you know, 50 years from now, people are probably going to be saying the same thing about Paul Rudd. Like, man, I know that. I thought that guy would never die. Uh, He'll look fifty then. Yes, he will. <laughs> and Keith Richards will still look two hundred. <laughs> right. Keith Richards is going to be the last one to go. He will, he will Face it. It's a cockroach. <laughs> well, let's get into checkouts and recommendations. Of course, I'd like to start. Uh, I'd like to talk about Cobra Kai season four. No spoilers here. Um, again. Great show, great season. It, they delivered it. It's excellent. It's fun. Uh, it's very addictive. You know, I, I was telling Bill, luckily I had Wednesday off uh, this last week. And uh, Tuesday night, I think, was maybe quarter to 11. I was like, all right, let's start season four. Because I kept seeing, like, screenshots and crap and YouTube videos giving away stuff. I'm like, I, I got to watch it then. I'll watch a couple episodes, you know, just a couple. And, uh, yeah, I think I went to bed like four that night or four in the morning. <laughs> and then I finished it the next day. I had two episodes left. So, um, loved it. It was really, really good. It's just fan service done right, in my opinion. Uh, and it writes a lot of wrongs the franchise did, especially not to give too much away. Everyone knows Terry Silver's in this new season, but Karate Kid 3 is like really a bad taste in everyone's mouth. It was pretty ridiculous. And somehow they were able to kind of, Redcon some of that storyline, I guess you could say, the characters and why they did what they did and were obsessed over this this freaking child. You know, they wanted to ruin this, what, 18-year-old kid, even though Ralph Macchio was um, probably in his 20s then. But <laughs> the funny thing is the guy who plays Terry Silver, I, I, his, his name escapes me right now, but he's only, he's either a year older or younger than Ralph Macchio. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> oh wow but yeah in this new show it's like you think get the dude's in his you know 70s or whatever but um apparently not it was fantastic i've seen the first episode that's about it of but season four three day weekend coming up so yeah no, of season one. Oh, you haven't even got to four I've yet i've only seen i've only seen one episode of the oh entire. gosh yeah but well. I, I have a three-day weekend coming up so maybe i'll binge that'll that. do it yeah just don't do anything else Get caught up so we can talk oh, about. It. I'm kidding. Okay. I'm kidding. I'll get a catheter put. It in might happen by accident. You know, you never know. But whoa, whoa, whoa! What? <laughs> He's dedicated. He's dedicated. That's the future, right? You just never have to leave yeah. a chair. There we go. I mean, at that point, you might as well just get a bottle and pee in that. It's, it's like way more comfortable. It's like Wall E. We're going to be those people in space, or just in those wheel wheelchair things, and we just eat was, and drink and play. I I was wondering how they. Never mind. I'm not going to get into. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, it's probably a little extreme, but I, <laughs> I just recently, uh, I just recently renewed my Netflix subscription, so I've been trying to catch up on a bunch. Of yeah. I had to catch up on Witcher, I had to catch up on Tiger King. So, Cobra Kai is up up next. Yes. Hopefully, unless I well, unless I hear about anything else. That- I think you really get a kick out of it. It's really really cool, and uh, yeah, never thought. I mean, I'm really happy for all the actors involved. You know, I saw Ralph Macchio at a convention years back, and I mean, there was really nothing going on for him. To, you know, from what you know, most of the world could see, he just he was just there because you know autographs for the Karate Kid and my cousin Vinny. But now he's got all this, you know, these seasons to um, represent. And uh, I don't know if he's a producer of the show, and so is uh, William Zapka, who plays Johnny Lawrence. So, <clears throat> yeah, I have uh, I've seen. Seasons one through three, and I'm about halfway through episode, uh, season four right now. Cool. And I will, I will tell you that uh, Johnny Lawrence is one of my favorite characters yeah. of all time after this series. So, Oh, for sure. Yeah, because that's pretty much how they based it, What right? It was like his interpretation, and it kind of morphs from there. But, yeah, it just I just like how, like, and I guess the original movies kind of did it, too. No, no character was really squeaky clean. I guess Mr. Miyagi was, but, you know, Daniel... 
could ground himself with discipline, but he could also be an asshole too. So, you know, that plays out in this, in this show. Um, and Johnny Lawrence. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. Like he was only in one, well, he was in two movies, but he was only like what? Five minutes, I think in the, the second one, which is originally shot for the first one. They just used it for the part two. Great character. Right. I mean, I, I tried Coors banquet cause of that show and, <laughs> um, Oh dear. Yeah. Hey, he's not bad. He's not bad at all. Um, I won't eat the uh, the runny ham or whatever he has, the bologna, but... Oh, I mean, I saw Karate Kid, but I haven't watched any of Cobra Kai. Oh, you're missing it. You gotta see it. I think you'll like I it. I know. I think you'll like it. I gotta be in the mood, you know? I know, yeah, I know. Well, if you watch one episode, you'll be hooked, probably, because that's what happened to I'm me. I'm sure. Every season, that's what happened. I did that with season three. I sat through it in one one day, and I was just, I was like, wow, I didn't plan on doing that. But the episodes go by so quick. It doesn't, it doesn't exhaust you, you know? To me, it doesn't. They're like, you know, what, 40 minutes, but they're so quick, and the, the, each one has a cliffhanger, pretty much, so it's awesome. It's it's great. Couldn't recommend it. Um enough but um book of boba fett we just hit episode two um for some reason a lot of nerds out there i mean we're nerds too but you know ridiculous nerds let's say they just lost their shit they're like this show's boring after episode one um i I don't get it i mean you gotta let it build right a little bit and i i dug the i dug the story they were telling i think it was something we all wanted to see on the on the well not not really a big screen but uh (laughs) Uh, but it was cool to see it played out because I'm sure in comics and in lore itself, books. I think Steve might have, you might have even told me how he, uh, spoiler, everyone pretty much knows, but he escaped the, the Psylocke or the Sarlacc pit. Is that it? Sarlacc pit? Sarlacc pit. Yep. Sarlacc pit. Yes. So it's cool to finally see that. And I was, I was happy with the pacing, honestly. And they're expanding so much in the universe, just like the Mandalorian did. And, in a good way, I think, you know, and it's just like a toy box, right? And they're just playing with everything. And, and you know, I think people just need to give it time. And I don't know everyone's just expecting perfection, you know, off the bat. And I just, I don't understand you would it. Think but. That, you would think that by now, like, I mean, whether it's Star Wars or Marvel, um, every Disney Plus series that has come out, the first episode always sucks. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, not really sucks, but like slow, right? Like, yeah. oh, this is this is boring. Like, I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> Shut up and just watch the second <laughs> one and see if you still like it. If you still like it after that, then continue watching. All right. All right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, they're expanding the universe and they're doing it the right way. Not like you know George Lucas, who was like, oh, I'm gonna make this person related to that person and make <laughs> Darth Vader the creator of C3PO and the owner of R2D2. Yeah, it was dumb. Yeah. Dumbass, but I thought. anyway, well, um, <laughs> and you're you're right. They come. People complain about the first episode of Loki and stuff, you know. And it, 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 you have to set up stuff, and you know, because by the end of Loki, everyone was creaming over it. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's that's the way it's it's been with any of these miniseries. I think. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, probably with the exception of the Mandalorian. Like the first episode of that hooked me into it right away. I was like, I've got to see more of this. This is cool. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but I do, I do like the world building they're doing, like fleshing out more of the characters. Um, the Tuscan Raiders, uh, surprised Holy me shit. most right. out of this. Um, I mean, they kind of touched on that a little bit in the Mandalorian. Yeah. But I always saw them as just, you know, these animals, thirsty savages yeah. from, you know, the movies or whatever. I mean, Anakin goes and slaughters them because they're animals. Right. Um, but they, they actually, it's kind of cool to kind of see a little bit of their lore. Um, mm-hmm. the second episode is like dances with wolves in space. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm not going to spoil a whole lot of it, but it's, uh, I'm very excited to see where it goes from here. Yeah, I think it's going to be getting better as we go. And I, I, like I said, I liked what I saw. Yeah, it's a little slow setup, but I think we have the advantage of knowing what the Mandalorian has done to know that Boba Fett will we'll get there with him. You know, you're going to have some cool action set pieces. Um, you know, it's a lower budget than the film is, but I, I like well, everything and, they're doing. It's cool. And Boba Fett, unfortunately, has always been kind of the redheaded stepchild of Star Wars. Like they they've always kind of done him dirty. I felt like 
the holiday special didn't do him any favors. That was his um, first introduction, though, right? That's how people got excited yeah. for him. Yeah, because I and then yeah. em, Empire, he's in it for six minutes. Jedi, he goes out like a bitch. Um, <laughs> he screams, and then and then he's a little kid again in Attack of the Clones. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we never really got to see much of Boba Fett, but we always wanted more, and I think this definitely scratches that itch. I mean, I always thought he was badass, but I, I, I didn't get the fan base, but I didn't, I didn't know the history too much before he was actually put in the films. Like people were like, "Oh, what is this?" and he was originally going to be like all white, I think, in the, the original costume test. Um, it's really, really cool to yeah, see that. They, um, they wanted him to like be different from the, you know, not just look like another stormtrooper. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much, but uh, yeah, I mean, like just being a fan of the comics and the the you know now whatever they call it, le not legends or whatever, the ones they just like said were non-canon and will never be referenced again, but. Oh, um, like all the books those. and the expanded universe and stuff yeah, like that. Of like course. he's always been just like an absolute badass, and to be able to see that on screen finally is right. very cool. So, plus Tamara Mortensen, or however you say his name, yeah, better like his. Uh, he, he's doing a very very good job. Oh yes, yeah. that's and great for him. Especially, I mean, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's pretty cool to see him be able to. Kind of flex his acting chops from not necessarily behind a helmet for yeah. sure yeah yeah it's it's a great yeah it's a it's a great thing it's just like the you know these older characters we're seeing coming back you know and playing these parts again it's it's a real treat you know and i'm sure it's for them too because it's like they probably thought that was that was it that was the only shot they got and you know they changed all the Stormtrooper voices to his, I believe, in the special editions. So he, you know, he got he got that expansion there. But uh, yeah, I mean, after Attack of the Clones, that was that's pretty much it for him. Because uh, Lucas was just kind of done. But thankfully, yeah, this is this is really cool. I'm I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Yep. Um, there is a huge rumor though that, uh, and it's just rumor. But I'm just figuratively asking here. So they're saying Han Solo will be in the finale. Don't know if that's true at all, but if he is, yeah. the rumor also says it's Harrison Ford. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Do you? A lot of people are at wondering, or they rather have Alden Enric, I think that's how you say his name, from Solo play the part because you know he already took over, kind of. So, what are your thoughts on all that? I don't see Harrison Ford coming back. I really don't. There's no yeah. way. He uh, he for years was saying like, oh, just kill off Han Solo. Like, I want him to be killed off. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, when Force Awakens, I think he kind of had fun with a little more fun with it. Yeah. But at the same time, I think he was he was happy to be done with the character. Yeah, there's so, a zero percent um, chance of him coming back. Unless they offer him like some which the contract for having him back even for a cameo would probably have to be astronomical. Mm -hmm. But but like why go through I, all that de-aging yeah, you know when that. you already have I another actor, just, yeah. Well, I think it's just I could see them using his likeness like they did with Luke Skywalker yeah. in uh Mandalorian. I could see him doing something like that. But then again, Mark Hamill came back to voice that, so right, right. And you know, I I don't see somebody like trying to be like Harrison Ford, you know. The only problem, I think, is using... Because, you know, it was great to see Luke and stuff, but rather they didn't show his face, at least, because it just... That kind of took me out of it. I, I, you know, I know a lot of people were like, this looks so great, and like, it, to me, it was just not quite there. I really wanted Sebastian Stan, because he looks just like the guy, you know? And I think that would it be does. wise if they want to continue on with the Luke series, Unfortunately, Mandalorian season three, there might be some training with Luke, so I don't know how they're going to do that. Uh, I guess they'll de-age him again because they kind of already done that. So they, it's like, do you just yeah. alt course or what? But with Ford, you did have Alden already take over the 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 role, and he was playing like what a ten year. Uh, he's playing Han Solo probably ten years younger than maybe when we met him in um, Star Wars. So you know, ideally, yeah. I think you would use him for that. I could see Alden doing the post Jedi Han Solo. Right. You know, cause I mean, he wouldn't be like old and gray haired like he is in force awakens at the same time. I, 
not only do I not think they will bring back Han Solo, I don't think they need to. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion on it. I mean, whatever. I didn't think they needed to bring back Luke Skywalker (laughs) for Mandalorian, but then they did, and it was fine. So, well, I think it's because yeah, we wanted we wanted that Luke in the new films, and we just didn't really get that. So it was just kind of cool callback there ryan johnson (laughs) anyway i know at least Um, at least have them have one more adventure together that would have been really cool the thing is like with these characters that they're fleshing out like ahsoka tano boba fett dinjarin they don't need to have the the main cast Mm -hmm. be there to be able to flesh them out Mm -hmm. it makes it makes sense in some aspects i mean you can't really talk about jedi without talking about luke skywalker but do you really need Harrison Ford? Do you really need Harrison Ford or Han Solo or whatever to show up? Right. To give this give this show relevance, I think it'll stand alone on its own. Maybe yeah. like show him from the back or something like that. And just oh be yeah. Like, have him like walk into Jabba's palace and be like, "Sup, bitches?" Or something. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. But like, do you really need to do like a whole? Like Boba versus Han Solo redemption kind of thing. So. I, I like less is more. That's what I like. Just like with exactly, just like with Tarkin exactly. in um, Rogue One, I would have been just happy with seeing his back, and then you see a little reflection in the glass. But I did not want to see anything else, and I get why they had to show it, and it kind of worked. But yeah, like I, you know, maybe. Just in my head, you know, Boba Fett goes to the bar and they're like, hey, someone bought you a drink. And, <laughs> and you see this like hand cross the way. And it's. He's still up in the back, raises his glass. Yes, he's like, like we're good still job, talking kid, about Star Wars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just making sure. Just well, making you can make any interpretation. I mean, hey, it, it gets I viewership, mean. right? It's all That's what it's all about. It's like, hey, let's hook up. Let's. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about the Buzz Lightyear movie, Megan. <laughs> let's make these fanboys just lose their minds. <laughs> yeah. No, that would be cool though. That's more artistic way to do it. Just like with Luke, they could have like had him keep the 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 cloak on or whatever the hood, and that's all you really needed. You know, they you could, could have, do the voice still. They could have literally, yeah, they could have literally just put some some extra in a robe and given him like a prosthetic chin to look like Mark Hamill. Yeah, and a little butt shown chin. Yeah, been like, you know, I'm here for the boy. Or, yeah, uh, I don't know. That's but why we should be in I, charge. Yeah. I very much agree with that yeah. statement, though, Josh. Less is more. Yeah, less we, is more. We don't need to connect everything. We're not George Lucas. Come on. <laughs> I think I think John Favreau has a good a good handle on how the series should be going forward. For sure. Yeah. I mean, he may not want that. He may not want that honor, but I say give it to him. What are you gonna? I mean, you're not gonna be playing Happy Hogan anymore. So <laughs> yeah. unless he unless he does, who knows? Never know. Any other recommendations before we move forward? Um, I had one that I found on Netflix uh, and rec- recommended to me by a coworker. Um, there's an animated series called Arcane. It's nine nine episodes long. Um, it's based on the game League of Legends, which I've never played. I know nothing about League of Legends, but I still was uh, very much intrigued by the by the show itself. Um, Haley Steinfeld. Um, does the voice for the main character. She does a hmm. tremendous job. A lot of great music in it. Uh, a lot of great visuals. If nothing else, just watch it for that. Um, it reminds me of, granted, I've never played League of Legends, but it reminds me more of like Borderlands or Bioshock than it does anything else. Oh, cool. Um, it's kind of like that dystopian sort of feel to it, but uh, it's a very cool show. Um, it's already renewed for a second season, like, you know, everything else. And, Netflix when they have a popular series gets renewed right away but uh, it uh, was recently dethroned for the top streamed series on there by Cobra Kai of course <laughs> but uh, yeah check it out if you if you want to um, even if you're not a big fan of animation it's more of like a computer generated uh, animation style kind of like Clone Wars oh, a little cool. bit yeah but, uh, yeah it's still still really good very very bingeable i didn't intend to watch the entire nine episodes in one day but i did <laughs> wow i haven't been watching anything too nerdy i've been binging the crap out of fbi on cbs That's typically i'm not a i don't know cop shows and those kind of procedurals are just 
kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, um, this one has, it's just, they got compelling characters and some pretty good writing and acting, but, uh, yeah. So it, um, that, that's been a fun one to watch. It's, um, on its fourth season, I think. And the first three are on Paramount plus, um, first three cool. seasons. And, uh, yeah, we're in the middle of season two right now. It's a that's a pretty good one. Otherwise, I've been watching. I'm uh, halfway through the Boba Fett episodes, uh, season or episode two, and um, Cobra Kai, and I think that's about all we're doing. Cool. Well, who's it? Who's in FBI? Any big stars? Not really. Um, a lot of people you'd never really heard from or heard of, and a lot of the guest stars you see kind of frequently on show to show but um it stars missy peregrine um and zico zaki is the uh the top two guys um they're they're the uh, uh the two agents that are kind of the, the primary focus jeremy sisto is in it he was in clueless um a lot of people know him from that he's actually my favorite part of the show just an awesome character he's pretty cool and uh but yeah, I mean, it was just, it was, I was surprised. I was at my uh, mother-in-law's one night and she was watching it and we were getting ready to leave and, and the show had just started and we stayed throughout the entire show. So, um, <laughs> it's like an hour show. I'm like, All right. yeah, it was a one hour show. And I was like, you know, uh, we gotta go, let's head out. And, you know, I'm watching like the first scene, the opening scene. I'm like, I sat back down and uh, we watched the whole thing. It was it was good, actually. It was it was a fun one. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, because I, I get tired of a lot of those myself. You know, I I like Law and Order was my favorite back in the day, and I kind of stopped watching the spinoff ones. And you know, all of them now are very, especially the CBS ones. They're so formulaic. You know, they have they all have a team, and I, I'm in the mainframe, and all this crazy shit. Yeah, and CSI, you know, all that. Um, but yeah, I'll have to check that out. That's a CBS show. I take it right. It's a FBI. Yep. Okay. Yep. The Witcher is definitely uh, worth watching. Uh, hell of an ending, uh, wouldn't you say, Bill? I feel like oh, that. Yeah. And I was kind of expecting it, but it was like you weren't sure. So mm-hmm. This is season uh, two, right? It just ended? Yeah. Yeah. And it's been renewed for a third, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, that was my understanding. Yeah. Great. So uh, I don't I don't doubt we have any chick fans um on the podcast but My. Emily, Emily in Paris is a good Netflix series um that one was trending for a while it's super popular I enjoy it so and that's also being renewed for a third season so and that stars Lily Collins so if you're a Phil Collins fan oh his daughter yeah that yeah. would be his daughter it is about a like New York social media marketing guru whose uh, company buys out a Paris consulting company, and huh. she has to go over there and kind of help them brand some of their clients or market, not brand, market some of their clients. You know, she sleeps with somebody who <sighs> she's, who her friend, yeah, I don't, it's got Sex in the City vibes. Well, there you go. Um, Kind of in a way, uh, except not as many female characters, thank God, because I don't really know anybody who has that many female friends. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's a it's kind of a, a good chick show. Although I've seen men watch it too, you know, from my TikTok binges. So um, it's just kind of a a, a cool fashion. Um, I don't know show. I like it. Edit that out, please. A cool fashion show. A cool fashion show. That. That's gonna be the title of the show. It's too late. It's it's a cool fashion show, and I think Lily's a really good actress too. Yeah, you know. So that's crazy. She's Phil Collins' daughter. Like, I don't see the resemblance. And she does not have an accent. <laughs> she does not have an. Accent oh, she doesn't whatsoever. No. Really. Speaks hmm. English plain as day. Yep, plain as day. Wow. If I was raised in America, so, I'd take it. I probably, yeah. or probably partially, you know, over there and then, sure. and then here, but I cool. don't know who her mom is. Um, and there's really good, cool music too, I think. So there's a character that's in a band over there. And so they've got um, like a really cool soundtrack too. Does it seem to like it's shot on location? I mean, you know, I know they have back lots here, but it is. Okay. That's even better. No, yeah. Actually, um, in the season finale, they actually shot in Versailles or at Versailles. Nice. Versailles. So I like um, when they do that. Yeah. 
getting into the Flash movie wise, uh, a lot of news has been happening. You know, we all know this movie is going to focus on you know multiple worlds of their characters we you know love and hate. Um, got a taste of that with uh, you know Spider Man, No Way Home. Uh, so yeah, it's really a special time. I think this is going to be a new trend. You know, I think it's you know it's going to help a lot of people accept the latest versions of the characters they love. You know, if you if you liked Michael Keaton more than Affleck, well, you're getting them both, and they're probably going to work together possibly. Um, I think that does help a lot of people like accept, you know, and say, well, my, my character, the, my version still exists in a different world. So they're all, they can all coexist, even though that was the case before, but sometimes movies just have to like push you into like, Hey, think of it this way, you know? So, uh, with that said, Affleck, of course, came back to play Batman. Michael Keaton is probably getting more screen time. I imagine it seems from the trailer. And I'm fine with that. Um, but yeah, Affleck was interviewed recently. And uh, yeah, he feels that what he shot was um, his favorite interpretation of the character of his Batman, that is. And uh, yeah, he just fi- he just felt like he finally figured out how to play Batman, basically. And he said, you know, some of the footage I shot may be cut. You know, who, who knows? It's just but he just knows from everything they shot uh, and dealt with that it was it was a nice experience. And yeah, he said the you know with the Snyder cut and the Flash, um, it's a nice finish, um, you know, for his Batman. So he basically confirmed this is it, this is it for him. But never know in the future he could come back. Of course, we pretty much got the gist of this during the Joss Whedon takeover of Justice League. You know that was a hard experience for him. He actually relapsed into drinking, and I'm sure there's other factors too, but. You know, that that made him pull out of his solo Batman film, I think, that he actually wrote. And I, I heard the script was going to be uh, or was amazing. So unfortunately, we we won't get that at this point. But um, yeah, I thought that was very interesting. Uh, I know he joined the shoot late. They were already, you know, shooting other people over over in England, I believe. But yeah, there's also news that General Zod's coming back with his, uh, his right hand, um, Fiora. And, uh, of course they were both in man of steel to me, they were standouts. You know, they finally were really kick ass super, uh, spider, spider, Superman two. They were just as well. Um, but it was nice to actually see, a, you know, um, their powers fully shown in front of the camera, if you will. Uh, of course, everyone who's seen that, uh, Shannon's, uh, Zod did pass. And then he later on became uh, doomsday, I guess you could say. And then uh, Fiora went into the Phantom Zone. Those characters may be coming back, but they'll probably be alternate versions, most likely. You know, maybe they'll return from the Phantom Zone. And then Shannon Zod will be a different Zod. But yeah, I think it's very interesting. Uh, I'm I'm happy they're playing with all these characters we get to see again, you know, because, you know, it all goes back to Boba Fett and stuff. You know, you thought they were kind of done with and they, they're bringing them back and they're giving you just enough to not feel so shitty that we never got more out of them, I feel. Uh, And then, of course, you know, Spider-Man. A lot of resurgence of people wanting to see, you know, you know, figuratively, if Toby and Andrew made an appearance in Last Spider-Man, people want to see sequels to their Spider-Man now. And I think that's that's pretty cool. I think you could really dabble with all that, especially if Tom Holland wants to take a break from his Spider-Man sequels. I don't know. what, What do you guys think about all of this, I guess. Um, are, you, are you happy to see more sequels, possibly, or the Flash? Are you excited about the Flash, Batman, especially the new Batman? That trailer just dropped the new, the second trailer, I believe, to uh, Pattinson's Batman, which is very exciting. That's coming next few months. So I'm actually excited to see Affleck's Batman again. He's probably he's probably in my top five actors who have played Batman so far, and I. Yeah, I always liked the uh, kind of like the older, more world weary Bruce Wayne character that he played in Batman vs Superman. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I understand why he doesn't want to uh, continue playing Batman and why this is kind of being looked at like maybe resetting things a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited to see like you know Keaton in there, obviously um, Affleck. I'm glad he's at a place where he feels like this is, you know, the right depiction of his Batman. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I I just don't want to see, like, 
a trend with DC films where like everything gets cut from the theatrical release and then, you know, six months later, hey, we have the director's cut. I hope they learn from that with Snyder. It's like yeah. just just let the Leave them you alone. Know, just leave them alone. Let yep. the fans get what they want out of it. And, that Snyder Cup was so much know. better. So much better. I think we all it agree. Was. It was. Just... It was. Um, but yeah, it, it's just ho- hopefully they don't just neuter the entire damn thing and cut out a bunch of it to make it a, you know, less than two hour film. So I think that'll really take. Oh, it. they better not. <laughs> no, I think we would take it on as a what? What's the usual right now for a. Spider Man was that like two and a half hours? I can't remember. Yeah, it was a little yeah. over two and a, two and a half, I think. And that uh, went by. It went by quick. I mean, I remember back in the day, I didn't feel like we got enough. You know, uh, it was just like, really? That, yeah. That's it? We got to wait three more years? <laughs> We're so spoiled now because, yeah, it, you might have to wait three years or two years for an exact sequel, but you'll get them to pop up in other uh, films in between. So that's that really helps, I think. Um, you know, time pass quicker and. Yeah, I'm I'm for it. I don't give a shit. Like, yeah, what was Justice League or Snyder's Justice League? That was four hours, was it? Four hours? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I love Keaton. I love that man. I'm Batman. I wish he would adopt me. It's fine. <laughs> you want to be a Robin? Is that what you want? <laughs> yeah, I would love to be his Robin. There you go. In a very platonic way, obviously. Of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Keaton's my favorite actor of all time. So, I mean, I will not complain uh, of course at all but yeah no i mean i think it's i think it's cool i mean the spider-man stuff was great um i still think andrew garfield was criminally underrated and was more of a victim of you know the writing wasn't as good for the overall movies but his portrayal of the character and and what he brought to that um was just cut stupidly short so i would i'd love to see him do something else again in that character but you know it is what yeah. it is. And I can only imagine if he actually was in No Way Home, if he was, you know, he would have been fantastic. Let's just pretend he was, right? Wink. Right. Um Dude stole the show. I that, He was my favorite out of all of them. I'm sorry. I, I thought he was great. He just kind of made yeah. up for everything. He kind of was like, all right, here's my next chance. I'm going to go for it. Full throttle. You know, just charming as hell. It's great. He really did. Like, I, I actually really liked Andrew Garfield in No Way Home. Mm-hmm. If so he was, was in like, it, yeah. Well, I was like, well, man, like, you know, give him another chance, I guess. Like, he's even said, you know, if the, if it feels right, yeah, meaning like if it's a good story, good direction, things like that, he would even come back for a third Spider-Man film. Yeah, I or, think that would be great. He would reprise his role. Um, so I think that would be, that would be cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, just... What's the rumor why Morbius is being delayed again? Maybe he might be in that as Spider-Man, Morbius as Spider-Man, or um, Venom Spider-Man. Well, the, I'm not sure. The uh, the poster that they show in the trailer that that shows a picture of Spider-Man that says "Murderer" on it. That's Andrew's Spider-Man. Oh, interesting. So maybe I like it. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm for I'm for him doing another Spider-Man more than Toby because Toby got three. You know, I just felt Garfield deserved to have I, three as well. Just finish it I out. I feel like, yeah, I I feel like Toby uh, had his good uh, had his good ending. You know, like yeah. the best ending he was gonna get. Yeah, so, I think his has pretty much been uh, done. But hey, I'll accept a four. Sure, let's do it. <laughs> the the funny thing is that. Four is pretty much what is it like? Four kind of technically exists out there somewhere in like raw footage and storyboards. Yeah, storyboards for sure. Yeah, because I think um, it was oh, just never fully produced and fleshed out. John Malkovich was going to be Keaton's character, Vulture, Vulture right? Yeah, yeah, yep. It was going to be Vulture. Uh, Anne Hathaway was going to be Cat, uh, Black Cat, right? And then she ended up being Catwoman. I think you told me that maybe somebody yeah. did that's cool i don't know um, yeah i don't know yeah i, I just say the biggest thing with the flash like i'm excited for it you know i'm really excited to see keaton suit back up yeah. i just hope they don't cut this movie to shit and then realize six months later hey we fucked up 
The only thing is that bothers me kind of is, okay, we're going to get the car, the 89 Batmobile, right? And as mm-hmm. much as I'd love to see him in the suit from 89 or 91, 92, whatever it was, uh, does it make sense for an older Bruce, his older Bruce Wayne to still be rocking that shit? Or did he take time off in between, uh, you know, that film and this film? I guess that would make more sense, right? He just, it's like, well, see if it still fits, you know? But yeah, is he still wearing that shit like all these years, <laughs> like driving the same car? Well, I mean, it, you know, I don't care. Either way, I'm fine. I'm fine. Batman's a lot like Iron Man and that he's constantly upgrading his gear. And, yeah. You know, finding what works, finding what doesn't. So, yep. You never know. And we do know the other version of um, Isra's Flash or whatever. He does spray paint over a bat suit, a Keaton bat suit. And, uh, and you can see that in the, in the picture. I didn't notice it until it's all up close. I was like, holy shit, you can see the bat symbol, <laughs> but he got the flash symbol sprayed over it. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward. To it. I think that's going to be like a no way home. I mean, it's going to be its own thing, obviously, and it's going to be probably darker. Um, it's DC and it's fine. It can be different, but I'm I'm really excited. I'm sure it's going to have a lot of cool toys to go with it, you know, because <laughs> that's what they like to do is sell a lot of toys. And Batman, the Batman looks fantastic. I'm excited about that. Riddler looks kind of weird, kind of looks a um, little, you know, safety word ish, you know, but I guess, you know, it's another another take on the character. Probably would look silly, I guess, with a with a hat and a question mark suit. But call me old fashioned. <laughs> but yeah, old fashioned. Old fashioned. I'll have an old fashioned, please. Yes, a double. <laughs> um, Megan, you saw the Harry Potter union, correct? Yeah. Um, so HBO debuted Harry Potter's uh, 20th anniversary return to Hogwarts that came out on New Year's Day. So that was January first. So it is the 20th anniversary of the very first film that was released back in November of 2001. Um, It featured some of the stars I know. Crazy to think about, right? We'll Mm -hmm. get into that in a minute. It had uh, Emma Watson, Rupert, Daniel, uh, of course, uh, Gary Oldman was on there. Uh, Chris Columbus was on there. David Yates. uh, Ralph Fiennes was on there. Um, And then, of course, several other uh, actors as well. Those are just a couple. Um, They just came on to talk about, obviously, looking 20 years back, their um, time on the set, uh, some of the things that they had gone through. A lot of the footage that was, you know, shown or or shot, rather, is stuff that you can see in the extended versions of, like, the Harry Potter movies if you want to go out and spend the money on that. So a lot of it was there. But they just talked about their experiences and... Um, there were a couple of actors that were noticeably absent. Uh, a couple of those were Maggie Smith, um, Julie Walters, and of course, I don't know if I say his name right. Michael, is it Gambit? Gambon? Gam- Gam- Ooh. Steve, what is it? How you say it? Gambino. Gambino. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's not right. Childish Gambino was not in the special. I love him. Um, and then J.K. Rowling was not uh, present either, although right. they did use some of her footage from a 2019 interview within the special. Um, so she wasn't there either. I did kind of look online and I did see you know, people were asking, like, where were these actors? Why, why aren't they here? Um, assumptions were made about some of them. Um, J.K. Rowling, obviously, we'll touch on that, but... The other actors that weren't mm-hmm. there obviously are older, retired from acting, and probably just chose to, to bow out. Mm-hmm. Um, they also paid tribute, a very short tribute, might I say, to some of the uh, fallen Harry Potter characters. So Alan Rickman, uh, Helen McCroy, who uh, died recently, it was 2021 last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's 2022. Yeah. Uh, John Hurt, um, and then, of course, Richard, who had passed during the series. Um, so right. they paid tribute to him and it was just kind of, um, uh, a walk down memory lane as, as you will. Sure. Um, if you didn't, if you don't have HBO max, I mean, don't worry about it. It's probably the clips would be enough. Um, a lot of the stuff that they talked about was stuff that they had talked about before. It was interesting though. Uh, they had mentioned this a couple of times in the reunion, which was that it didn't feel like it was 20 years ago. And I have to agree with that because all of the actors are my age. Mm-hmm. So that's crazy. Uh, I grew up with 
I know. And I grew up with that series and it just doesn't, it, it just doesn't seem like it was that long ago. And they're, and they're so, I, I look at them and think, wow, they're so much older now. But then I also have to look at myself and be like, well, obviously I am also that old. It right. doesn't feel like that. And then and they talked a little bit about how it's just, you know, it's such a, a generational a piece, kind of like Star Wars is. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously now we, we're still very much in, to that world as is, is Harry Potter um, and how they've expanded upon that. Um, they said a lot of the people who come up to them now are, are people who weren't even you know born when they created the series. And it's also interesting, um, they talked a little bit about how they really truly did grow up on that movie set and and they talk a little bit about like about that which is something I haven't really heard before and so that was super interesting too. So that's cool. So it is worth watching if you do have the Max and you're a fan of Harry Potter. It was done yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think so. But like I said, if you don't have it, if you have any of the HBO extended or not HBO, gosh, I'm Harry like, Potter. I'm still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have any of the Harry Potter like extended versions, uh, a lot of that stuff is on there. Sure. It's like they just repeated it. Right. You know. So, is there? Uh, do they at all explore possibilities of coming back? Because a lot of people are like wanting that somehow. New story, obviously. They didn't touch on it at all. They talked about some key moments in the films. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed it because I'm a Harry Potter fan, but I just felt like it was, and it was nice to see them come together again. Because you always want that. You always want to see a cast, you know, come back and, and reunite yep. and just, you know, say hello. That's that's great. But like, they didn't. It, wasn't anything super special don't come for me don't come for me it just wasn't special <laughs> it just was they just were repeating the same Hagrid to your I door was. is that his name i don't know i'm a harry potter like <laughs> fanatic so i've seen interview after interview after right. interview and i and i have all of the you know special edition dvds where you can watch all of like i think it's like two hours of footage on like each right you know dvd and i just i felt like they were just talking about things they already knew but in a they're now adults Sure. So, yeah. That's uh, cool. I could see them coming back though someday, at least for like a trilogy of films. Uh, you know they're going to do it eventually. They have to, because I don't I think don't people are digging they... the other ones too well. The uh, prequel series, right? Um, Fantastic yeah, Beasts. I just don't know if they will. Yeah. You know, they didn't. They all still act like it was a part of their lives that they're they're glad is now done with they were happy to be a part of it but they're still saying i'm glad this is done yeah. <laughs> and and i think that is because i mean what they probably started when they were i mean what i was probably 10 so right. they want to do more things they there. are doing more things yeah i get it yeah. yeah yeah the other cool thing that they talked about you know is is how they you know so they grew up on that set but they they talked a little bit about how they went through and this is so random <laughs> Like they literally went through puberty, like <laughs> hormones, and they and they talk specifically uh, about uh, the Goblet of Fire and how that was that was all occurring during the, the shooting of Goblet of Fire, and so there was really no need for them to act out their their um, right. lust for females because right. it was already there. <laughs> so um, I thought that bit was interesting. That was something I hadn't heard before, and right. I laugh at it now. But yeah. Yeah, they're probably on leashes during that shoot. Get away. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, I, and Chris um, Columbus, he, um, I always feel weird saying his name. I, it doesn't, I'm sure. Because of his father, Christopher. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Christopher Columbus, yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> he probably had the most to say because he was around for the first two. Sure. Uh, had more memory, yeah. But all of the all of the directors came in and, and you know said something about about the films and and whatnot. But um, he's always the most energetic, mm-hmm. and I just I love hearing him speak because he's been on other you know things that I've watched. I think he's been on a couple of um, this is how movies are made Netflix series. Yep. So super energetic guy. Really like him. I I wouldn't mind seeing a film adaptation of The Cursed Child, but I think beyond that, like. I'm not a big fan of the, um, you know, whatever it is, the Fantastic Beasts yeah. and all that stuff. I'm not like a big fan of it. Um, I I kind of agree with the cast. Like it's, we watch you know the whole cast kind of grow up and yeah. mature and become adults, and it's kind of like the the film series is a legacy in and of itself. Like I don't think it really needs to be flushed out anymore, but. Uh, 
you know, it's it's kind of like the cursed child would be for me would be like the ultimate send off for it. It'd yeah. be kind of like seeing them come back as adults and you know, kind of pass the torch a little bit, and then like that's all we'd really need. I I don't know that we necessarily need that either. You know, sure. Um, and especially with the kind of controversy surrounding jk rowling oh right i i I don't know that it would i i could see it like coming to theaters and then people being like oh i'm not gonna go see it because jk rowling said mean things about or she wasn't a part of it right for everyone else who's like i don't care but she's not part of it so it's not yeah it's not my harry potter i I don't know yeah Yeah, i I, I get it i could see there being like a political fervor over it but yeah, yeah. It, it, maybe it'll pass, and that's when they'll they'll make their move. Who knows? What about you, Steve? Were you a Harry Potter fan? Are you? And would you want to see more films if they could make it happen? I've never seen Harry Potter. Never have. Nope. But you want to see more you? films, right? <laughs> yeah, I want to see them all. I want to see at least ten more made. Uncut. You really should sit down and watch it. I haven't sat down to watch it in a while, but um, you know they did show clips, and they just it just reminds you of how moving it is each piece it is mm-hmm. um just uh, just with their with the acting and the dialogue and there's some there's a lot of things that get dealt with in, in that series which is you know why i see why you know parents may not want their younger children to watch some of the later series or later movies because of what they deal with but yep. you really should sit down and I, watch it Steve. i would say Steve, you're in a unique position because what I did was I watched the, I watched the movies in their entirety, and then I went back and read the books, and I really wish I hadn't have done that. Um, hmm. I would, if anything, like even if you get them on audiobook or something like that, I would read the book series first. Okay. Um, if you're planning to watch the movies. Because there, there's a lot, especially with uh, Half Blood Prince. There's a lot they cut out of that movie, um, and I think if you're like, if you get big into like the story building and stuff like that, and want to know more about this character and that character, like the books are ten times better than the movie. But uh, yeah, I mean the the movie. Don't get me wrong, the movies are excellent. They're definitely something you should see before, you know. It's another art. I die. Yeah, I kind of yeah. thing, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I would say being in that unique position that you've never seen the movie, I would read the books first. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I don't have an aversion to it. I just yeah, yeah, I just never never got into it. It's it's a lot. He didn't grow up down. with it. He's just it's way above him. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'm just like, old. It's not above me, <laughs> or I'm not above it. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Well, I mean, he's a wizard. I felt like that would have been rude. You all know I'm old. Yeah, we know. It's, it's okay. You still have an epic voice, and I still exploit it on every single video I make, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, I would definitely... I mean, it's it's like... It's a good movie series, but I understand it's it's eight movies. That's a lot to sit through. Yeah. it's. I mean, and it's not something you'd need to binge, binge watch or anything, but yeah. Robert that's, Pattinson's that's in them. He's in one of them, right? I'm gonna strap you to your recliner and you're going to bend watch the whole we're going to clock Blah. clockwork Blah. orange it steve eyes. pry your eyes open I'm just, i just can't wait for her to strap me to a recliner <laughs> <laughs> this is brought to you by lazy boy go get one <laughs> oh, shoot. that's funny yeah. homemakers lazy boy and flex tape <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if we can put a boat back together we can make steve watch terry potter damn it Exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's a commercial we got to write up. Yes. <laughs> well, getting getting into games. I'll talk about this real quick because it's um, there's actually been some more information kind of put out about it. But as you all know, I'm a big fan of Days Gone, and I'm extremely pissed that there's no sequel. Um, I did a video uh, rant episode on my uh, channel about Days Gone and the sequel that was kind of scrapped for it. Um, a lot of, you know, Sony basically saying, oh, it wasn't successful. The critics tore it apart. We don't want to do a sequel to it. But we're going to do Uncharted 5 instead, which nobody fucking asked for. Um, 
but the uh, there was recently an article that came out that uh, Jeff Ross, one of the uh, people that was on the team for Ben Studios, said that it outsold uh, Ghost of Tsushima, which has been a widely successful game for Sony. Um, and Sony has thrown everything they have at that game um, and then basically said Days Gone sucked and we're not doing a sequel to it. Um, the analytics on that that they used were based on trophies um, that were obtained, you know, on PlayStation, like you get trophies for, you know, making achievements and stuff like that. So the numbers might not have been quite what they were thinking, but it doesn't negate the fact that they, when they resold it on switch for the P or on uh, switch on uh, steam for the pc that it you know did over a million copies sold and it's also it's a widely successful game and everyone's like sony get your head out of your ass why are you saying <laughs> that this game wasn't successful yeah um which i agree to um uh, you know i totally agree but the unfortunate thing is that we're still not going to see a sequel and they're probably going to use assets from what would have been the sequel to make a bunch of games that nobody wanted. Yeah, that's really shitty. So that's that's about it. I mean, yeah. Are they still I think it's a great game. Are they still doing expansions to it? They're not, but They're not. Uh, what's what's uh interesting is that it recently just had a patch update to Ooh. fix uh fix some of the technical issues with it and I I think that might have been more because it's so recent on pc that it was released and they probably had to fix some issues with that so they were probably like yeah we'll fix the issues for the ps4 version too nice but yeah i mean it's it's one of those games that you know is probably going to be on a cliffhanger forever and we'll never get a proper sequel to it which is really unfortunate because despite all of its flaws it is a really fun game and i think sony needs to Look at the fact that uh, critic reviews don't mean that the game is unsuccessful. It right. just means that people don't. It's the whole Rotten the Tomato ways. factor, which yeah, constantly exactly. screws up good films, I think, in my opinion. And, of course, what you think, games. Which you th would think that uh, you know Sony is uh, very much aware of because some of their movies and stuff that have been really good and that people really liked uh, got review bombed by mm. Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes, but... And again, you know, Sony is a little out of touch. Let's just put it that way. So Sounds that, like it. That's all I'm gonna. That's all I'm gonna say. About What's that. the main premise for Days Gone? It's basically you're a biker, right? So, and it's a zombie apocalypse. So Days Gone, yeah, it's like a it's a zombie survival kind of game. Um, it's the the best way I can describe it is Walking Dead meets Sons of Anarchy. Cool. That's cool. So it's uh. I mean, it's what I find really cool is that you can take on basically ho entire hordes of zombies. Like you have to clear out these nests, and there's literally hundreds of them coming after you, and you're one guy with a baseball bat. You have to kind of holy shit, kind of like figure out how to you know navigate it that way. Right. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. The game is a lot of fun, especially for Intense. zombie fans. Yeah. Um, if you're you know a fan of like the walking dead stuff like that it's really cool there's also i think the story is tremendously well done um and unfortunately it ended on a cliffhanger so i really hope at some point ben studios can get back together and say okay we're gonna now that we're done with uncharted and all this other stuff that we didn't really want to work on now we can work on days gone and yeah they're a small development team. I mean, small smaller development teams have made widely successful games. Like Among Us was made by three people, and look how popular that is. Right. So, I mean, really, it, it's just like put your head out of your ass, Sony. That's that's all I'm gonna say about it. Matter of time, I'm sure you get a new, you know, executive or something come in, and they're like, "Hey, what about this Days Gone thing?" Well, <laughs> well, and that's the thing is that the uh, the former. Um, one of the former executives of Sony uh, that left in 2019, he was like, I love this game. You know, mm -hmm. let's, yeah, let's do it. Let's make a sequel. Let's, you know, make it multiplayer. Let's do this. Let's do that. And then when he left, the new yeah. person that took over was like, yeah, not so much. Let's just add on to these other Yeah, franchises everything that guy liked, forget it. Yeah, that's how it goes, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a, yeah, it's. 
classic dilemma with Sony. Yeah. Whether it be games or movies or whatever right. else. Well, you know, of course, we were gone, you know, over Christmas. But, uh, Steve, you had a little early Christmas gift yourself. You, um, I don't know, you get it before Christmas? I can't remember. Um, I got it on Christmas Eve delivered to me. Nice. Um, it's a uh, Mortal Kombat 2 arcade machine. Sweet. Um, yeah, and it comes with a lot of different games. It has the original Mortal Kombat. It has Mortal Kombat 2, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. And then it's got some of the older classics from Midway, like Defender, Joust, uh, Gauntlet, Rampage, uh, Paperboy. It's got Wizard of War and a, and a couple others. Really? Um, Very. Yeah. Cool. So it's it's got you know it's it's pretty slick, man. It's the real deal. It uh, was not difficult to put together. It just took a lot of time because mm-hmm. it's a uh, it's it's pretty big. Um, no cursing involved. No cursing involved, and uh, uh, Terrell and I actually were playing some Mortal against each other the other day. It was a lot of fun, and nice. Um, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, Mortal Kombat Two is probably my favorite arcade game of all time. So to have it at home is uh, is pretty awesome. That is. Was so cool. it a arcade one up cabinet? Yep. Or... Yep. Oh, okay. Very cool. I want yeah, one of those. So they uh, they do a good job. I um, you know, if we get we're kind of talking about getting another place and if we do and we get that basement i always wanted um Ooh, man i was cave. thinking like getting maybe one one of these a year or maybe two you know and just having a because yeah. they have like that four player x-men arcade cabinet as well oh yes. shit yeah yeah i know i uh i've been looking at that one too it's like 800 bucks or something like yeah that. Yep. um road trip now speaking of that so i have a question for you on this one does it offer um online multiplayer it does not okay because i know that was a big thing with the x-men one like it was going to be able to do like local and online multiplayer or something like that but yeah that'd be sweet wouldn't it yeah but uh that's cool i think that that's definitely become a thing of the past is like the couch you know multiplayer kind of thing right you can like get people together and like okay let's Let's bang this out. Let's have a tournament. Yeah, you don't have to pay like two grand or three grand for a, an actual arcade. It's just one game, right? Usually, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's very cool. That is cool. I want uh, uh, so bad with the turtles, but yeah, if we can get other games with it, is that usually what they they usually come with other games like that? I don't know about all of them. My dad has the uh, Pac Man and Galaga one, and Pac Man is just I think a standalone, and I think the Galaga actually has Galaxian in it as well, which was the uh, game before galaga gotcha um but yeah this one i i honestly i, I didn't even know it came with all those other games oh know? cool and, uh, and there it is on the box i'm like well holy shit you know i mean and i ordered it <laughs> online i just didn't you know yeah i didn't read a lot about it i'm like i don't need to read about this it's got more combat too i'll take it you did know? you get the stool with it or uh, yeah. just got the game for now so i think you can buy special I, stools I, that match game. It. Yeah. I, I haven't gotten the stool yet i'm thinking about the stools yeah. but um i need more room the loft yeah. is getting a little crowded yeah. up here <laughs> right <laughs> unfortunately right yeah yeah you can come live by me steve i'll be your neighbor <laughs> all right that house is still open right uh it is they're actually getting ready to build it Ah, nice. Wayne Manor. Very Wayne, cool. yeah. yeah. Yep. Right Manor. That's cool. We'll be hanging out with you a lot, Steve, if you get that basement. Whether okay, you like man, it or not. It's, um, <laughs> it would be, and that's, that's, that'd be the whole point of it. I mean, yeah. you know, to be able to have friends over and do stupid shit like that. I mean, it's, uh, it'd be a lot of fun. That would be. That's very cool. It makes me want to get one of those so bad. Uh, maybe I will eventually. I just don't know where to put it. That's the, that's the thing. Well, uh, moving into comics, Steve. Yeah, so in comics, um, I've been I haven't been reading as much as I want to lately, but I'm still picking them up on the iPad when you know when they're coming out sure. new. One, one, a couple, a couple things. So the first thing is I've really been diving back into the Spawn titles. Nice. Um, I think I had the first maybe. 80, 90 comics when it very first came out back in the day. Um, fell out of it. 
and now I'm getting back into it. And they have a few different new releases now. Um, Gunslinger Spawn, so he's kind of like an Old West guy. Oh, and then cool. there's a um, King Spawn, which is just kind of a uh, offshoot of the regular Spawn comic. And it just, I, I don't know uh, why I fell out of those comics, man. I mean, they're just, they're a lot of fun to read. So, you know, check those out if, if you want. Um, Are they the older issues or the new one? I might have missed that. Sorry. So, yeah, I mean, the, the regular Spawn comic, I'm trying to catch up on uh, chronologically. Mm. So I'm I'm still behind. But, sure. yeah, the, the King Spawn and the Gunslinger Spawn are two new series. Nice. Um, that just came out. And so uh, I'm, I'm checking those out. And I've seen the first couple issues, and, and they're pretty awesome. But, are they different uh, people as Spawn? Spawn is always great. Okay. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, for the gunslinger spawn, it is yes. Okay, just curious. I was and like, uh, he's traveling through yeah. time or something. <laughs> yeah, right. But no, it's a, uh, you know, it's still dark as hell. But uh, cool. the art is just always been so phenomenal in those books. Whether it's McFarlane or Greg Capullo or whoever else sure. he has penciling it, uh, they just do a great job. And you know, his involvement is still day to day. So yeah. I mean, he. Um, kind of ensures the quality and, and care for, for that universe that he's created. So that's a, it's, it's a pretty neat, uh, highly recommended. Um, and then, uh, the Punisher. Yeah. So yeah, the Punisher has a new logo. Uh, has anybody seen that besides me? I have. I have. What is the deal with that? Yeah. So they have a new logo because of the negative connotation around his old logo being associated with like alt-right movements shit um yeah and so yeah people kind of adopted that logo etc and part of me thinks you know i mean i can understand from a corporate perspective where they're coming from with the change yeah but the other part of me wants to keep the logo and have the punisher go on like a 12 issue series (laughs) killing alt-right people (laughs) all across the country um, yeah i mean that's a that's a big thing for like veterans too like i see all kinds of like veteran and military related apparel and stickers and stuff like that that, that have like the punisher logo and it's like you know became like kind of associated with that but i i don't know the new design like i i don't really dig it it looks kind of like a i don't know like something out of doom or something like that it doesn't like look like right to me yeah skull kind of thing or something. it just looks weird yeah and they, you know I, I don't know i just think that you know if, if they turned that character around and had him start going after alt-right type groups and things like that you know that group is so fickle and, and hateful anyway that they would probably stop using the symbol right well, and you know it, but I, I don't know. It's just, it was all dumb to me. But I mean, I, I like I said, from a brand perspective, I, I, I can see those conversations taking place. But uh, I also am not a fan of the new logo. I mean, if you're going to do a new logo, okay. You know, but uh, this one just looks kind of kind of odd. There's other skulls well, too, then, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, then was that... Um... Was it kind of like some anti-gun movement kind of thing with it too? Like the reason why they gave him swords, or oh, that's there right. Something, you know, I that I don't way too much into it, but I don't know. But I'm kind of reading into it the same way you are. I don't know yet. I I'm gonna start. I honestly, I haven't been reading the Punisher for years, uh, and and it's it makes me want to pick it up just to kind of see. But you know, it's like <sighs> let's not over woke. Our, our, our stuff yeah yeah like that's that's a big problem with me is like oh you know this might offend somebody so let's take this away it's like are you now gonna say like oh people are getting offended by you know walking into spider webs so spider-man right. is now gonna like remove the webs from his costume right hey, the arachnophobia day. i can't handle this <laughs> um <laughs> we'll call him man it's been such like an iconic part of the character for years. Right. Right. I mean, exactly. dating back to the sixties. Yeah. Yep. Any, no, I, I don't disagree. Anybody can use any of these but, symbols, right? I mean, what's, what's to stop it, right? If someone uses like the bat symbol and they're a freaking terrorist, like, well, what are you going to do then? I mean, you're just going to keep, well, yeah. at some point, 
at some point, Batman and Joker are only going to be resolving their differences by playing rock, paper, scissors, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what you need, Joker? What do I need? A hug. <laughs> yeah, it's getting a little out of control. those YouTube videos that they used to have of, uh, like, Spider-Man and, or not, no, it was Superman and Batman. And like the commentary between the two of them. Yeah. Who was better. Yeah. I don't know why that popped in my brain. But. I'm Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good. Yeah. 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 That's just crazy. I mean, I'd rather they just do a Dolph Lundgren Punisher without the skull, you know, like just have him have a black shirt. Like really? Yeah. Yeah. Just do that. Take, you know, you don't need the skull, but I don't think you definitely need a, a goofy looking, skull or what is that i mean it's just weird it's got like horns or something i'm going off memory yeah, here yeah. but <laughs> it I, don't know. I mean is is pita piss because it looks like a cow <laughs> well, there you go they'll say, change it, it looks like they it looks like they they gave the you know they went to like some six-year-old and was like hey can you draw the <laughs> the you know uh mythosaur boba fett skull from memory <laughs> like sure exactly <laughs> Perfect. We'll pay you a dollar. Yeah. Uh, I I doubt it'll last. I mean, they I, they should just take it away if they really don't want to. Uh, yeah, I, I get it. It's a symbol, and they need another symbol. But yeah, that was really shocking. I I was like, uh, I don't like this. Yeah. So I don't know about the swords either. You know, if that's I get it. Like I I yeah. get sick of seeing the Punisher skull on Ford F one fifties as much as the. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Change the character because of that? Like, really, just stop selling them at Walmart. How many guys? That's yeah, I, I, yeah. I see those on a, I see those on trucks, and I don't think I don't think the Punisher sucks. I think I wish the Punisher saw you out in this. <laughs> how? Yeah, like how funny would it be to like have you know have him like chasing down some criminal on the street and he gets like cut off by some dude in an F, F Ford Ford F one fifty who's like you know, wearing a MAGA hat. He's just like, you know what? Boom. Blows him yeah. the fuck up and says, I get sick of seeing that shit. <laughs> I would love that. Well, how many, of those, write that. how many of those people really think or really know yeah. what that symbol means, you know, besides Jerry's got it and I want to look cool or yeah, that's, that's what I'm, I live for. Like how many people really like the, know what like that is? Confederate flag thing yeah. All over again. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Oh, that's crazy. Just, Put a freaking daisy on his shirt if you're going to be such a fucking snowflake about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus. The MCU version, guys, of the Punisher coming soon. Um, no skull. Just a Just smiley face. The room. Oh my Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, sisters. <laughs> Who's this guy with the oh. slingshot? I'm the Punisher. <laughs> Nerf, Nerf pistol. My mom's calling me. I think there go. should be an entire podcast dedicated to the two of you talking exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to talk all day long today, like Madden. Go for it. But this, this I did, that would irritate myself, I think, more than anyone else. Bingo, whammy. <laughs> if you want to read a comic, you got to learn to read. <laughs> You gotta look up. I'll send the oh. clip after this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you the Mad TV. Um, John Madden selling like this popcorn popper thing. It's hilarious. He gets like he ends up getting like third degree burns because he's it, it just keeps fucking up on him. <laughs> it's just funny. He's just <laughs> gradually getting more and more pissed. It's it's good. I'll send it to you, and I'll maybe I'll put in the show notes as, as we're doing that. But uh, yeah, before we go, let's plug all our stuff real quick. Uh, of course, Field of Geeks. Check us out on all platforms you listen to podcasts uh youtube facebook we're there too twitter um also field of geeks dot com five one five gaming nice <laughs> that uh, was really steep that was me no just now or was that the recording no that's him no that was me just now he was doing oh, it live god jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> Bill has Megan to pay Steve 50 Lord's bucks every time he Bane. says that. Are you Catholic? <laughs> Jesus Christ, 515. <laughs> oh my Fuck God. you, Sony. 515 Gaming. Whoa, hey. What? Warner will screw up the Flash. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, the Punisher doesn't punish. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Put that gun away. <sighs> Anyways, All Bill, right, go ahead. I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> How do you leave anyway, this? Check out, uh, even though I don't have anything new on 515 Gaming, go check it out anyway and subscribe. Uh, my latest video that I was working on is kind of being delayed a little bit. Um, trying to figure out OBS and do editing through that, but uh, I'll probably be putting something out here in the next couple weeks. Great. Uh, yeah. But like, yeah, beginning of January is usually kind of slow for me, like getting through the holidays and getting back into work and stuff like that it's been kind of slow so uh we'll find something to throw out there soon excellent steve you got a blog yeah i'm still old school because i'm 319 years old i'm 515 years old actually hey records are coming Um, back man you're on you're on to it yeah so you know someday if people ever read blogs again they can go to mine steve's comic blog.com um steve's comic blog.com come 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 <laughs> get so in the I, game uh, yeah i i just it's finished up um seasoned, <laughs> seasoned. <laughs> uh, expired seasoning expired um, milk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to be on my tombstone actually it's expired milk <laughs> but check your dates like fine milk yeah. <laughs> new blog coming this week so excellent please. is there a preview to what it's going to be or we have to we have to wait yeah so i um this is this is going to get me canceled probably i'm sure in the world but um are you really I, sure you want to release your paid content i'm hanging out <laughs> <up. laughs> uh, i'll I'll, re- I'll i'll send out the 20 second preview clip no um it um it's about the bat family and kind of the current state of of the bat family so to speak and then um woke ism in comics so oh, okay great i like it probably Probably won't make a lot of friends, but that's okay. That's okay. Well, the vegans still hate you, right? So, yeah, they still hate me, and I, I don't have a lot of friends anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> not really in the market for friends. But that's all right. Yeah, people suck mostly. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that said, uh, we'll be back. I'm Josh. I'm Bill. I'm Steve. I'm Megan. Take care.